What's up? How are you guys today? We are going to go over my new food pyramid ever since I quit the carnivore diet a few years ago, which, uh, you know, destroyed my liver the eight years I was on it. But uh, now that we have a reasonable amount of experience on my liver detox diet, ultimate detox diet, steak and potato protocol, whatever you want to call it, this has been working and I've been feeling excellent on it. And, you know, we've done some day of eatings. I've showed you guys what I'm having now, but this is kind of laying it all out there. So we'll explain why I'm eating certain things, what I can eat, the frequency of eating those things, and then uh, we'll go into cheat meals and that type of stuff towards the end. So everything in blue, the organic grains, animal protein, everything should be organic, guys. Organic vegetables, organic fruits, those should be eaten pretty much every single meal. The stuff in red, the plant fats and the omega-3 foods might not want to have it depending on your current health status. The purpose of the grains in the diet, the starch, is to soak toxins from the liver and feed the gut bacteria. And since they're generally very bulky, you're also giving your body some gut motility to keep things moving. Plus, they are typically the least inflammatory voluminous food if you are sourcing them correctly, organic, and picking specific types of grains. Animal protein, you're getting your nutrients, really, you know, for your cellular health, the amino acids, the protein, some minerals, cholesterol, the high, high, high quality saturated fats. Animal protein is, is the bulk of the nutrition of this diet. The fibrous vegetables are adding, you know, some more concentrated fiber, some gut motility because things like shiitake mushrooms and onions do have a decent amount of volume per calorie and just some flavor and some variety. But the main difference between the vegetables and the grains is obviously the caloric density and the amount of fiber that occurs in things like beans is substantially higher. The white fruits, light fruits, pears, apples, pineapple, kind of for enjoyment. You know, in some rare circumstances, you might not want to have the fruit, uh, but it's important to differentiate that you don't necessarily want to be drinking juices and having dried fruits and that compared to the actual just fresh fruits, having an apple or pear every single meal. For me, I enjoy it. It's like dessert. They are very high water content, very high volume, good for gut motility, excellent balance of uh, fiber, carbs, and sugars, uh, which is important because you know, your body uses different enzymes and different processes to absorb different macronutrients. So when you have a balance, your body's kind of being efficient as opposed to having to digest just a whole lot of one thing at once, like protein when you're eating two pounds of steak on the carnivore diet. The plant fats can kind of help stimulate detox and the body does need some fat for energy. So you might have to add a little bit and of course you need something to cook with. And then the omega-3 foods uh, that you're having on occasion, maybe two times a month, one time a month are for the omega-3, the slightly higher extra nutrition, but probably not needed you know, for at least a few months on the diet or if you're trying to be really strict with it. Now for the important part, what specific foods am I eating? How much of them and how frequently am I eating them? So I get a lot of questions about, you know, what foods people should be eating. Can I eat this? Can I eat that? What diet should I be following? This is probably going to be the video that I'm going to reference now moving forward because it's just simple. It's laid out. I can say, hey, here's my food pyramid. This is what to do now. You know, it's not as strict as just eating the steak and potatoes and most people will actually feel better on this. So we have white potatoes peeled, sourdough bread made with organic white flour and preferably filtered mineral water, glass bottle mineral water. We have Italian barley. All barley should be fine. I just like the Italian better. Steel cut oats, udon noodles made from white flour, white quinoa, so, so those six are what I've been eating a lot of them, what I feel really good on. Having white rice once or twice a week, maybe not that bad as long as you sleep well. There is an arsenic concern. White corn is okay. Not a lot of white corn products. Like usually the tortilla chips are fried in seed oils, which you definitely don't want. But you can make your own tortillas from white corn flour. Cream of buckwheat is okay. I don't really eat it that much. It's not that high in fiber, but you, know, you can add variety for breakfast. And you want grains every single meal. And I would say between 200 grams and 500 grams is acceptable depending on 
your body weight and your appetite and your activity level. And uh, in freedom units and American units, that would be about half of a pound to a pound and a half of carbs per meal. I'm probably usually eating around a pound, sometimes less. So it really is the bulk of the diet. And as I said earlier, everything needs to be organic. The reason for that is because a lot of the pesticides, the agrochemicals, fungicides, insecticides, glyphosate, all the stuff they spray on the crops will inhibit your liver function to some degree. So some people might be able to get away with a little bit of non-organic food, but we have a video on explaining why organic is good and, and then going into detail about what they can and can't use. So that's very, very, very significant, especially for the grains. Not as big of a deal for the animal protein, which I have with every meal. Uh, sometimes for breakfast, I will just have some oatmeal, but you do want to have between four to eight ounces, 120 to 220 grams of animal protein. And especially at the start, maybe try to keep it lower, or if you can tolerate more, if you're really physically active or bodybuilding, then you can increase it a little bit. Specifically, lean red meat. Grass-fed or organic beef are both fine. Try to keep the fat content low. Uh, if you do want to have some variety, I think Iberical pork is acceptable. There's a lot of issues with chicken from an allergen perspective, so I do uh, shy away from chicken. And you could also have lean white fish like cod or halibut. There's definitely a pollution concern with those fish, but you know, going to a restaurant, that type of stuff, you could try it. You know, the pros of having lean white fish are that it's not as high in iron. I mean, basically has no iron because it's white fish, uh, which is a lot easier on the liver. The trade-off is, you know, you have the ocean pollution concerns. So, hey, maybe I'll try some cod for, for a week or two straight, but in like really, really severe liver damage or gut microbiome imbalances, the white fish might actually be a safer bet uh, than the red meat in many cases because your body's not absorbing that iron or digesting it that well, the gut bacteria is just gonna kinda go crazy with it. Moving on to the fibrous vegetables, and I guess beans are kind of a legume, but we're basically talking about the non-grain, non-animal protein, kind of savory foods that you would have in the diet. Cannellini beans, very important. Uh, definitely wanna have the extra fiber every single day in at least one or two meals. Artichokes are good, cauliflower is excellent, white onion, shiitake mushrooms, really just adding some more fiber, some more bulk to the diet, and you're adding some flavorings too because eating just you know plain grains and meat can get pretty, pretty, pretty boring, so it's nice to throw in some onions and mushrooms here and there from time to time, and the, the more concentrated amount of fiber in the beans is definitely important uh, for keeping the liver detoxing, especially you know, if you're having something like sourdough bread or udon noodles or white rice, the grains that don't have as much fiber, you really want to add beans to those meals. So I'll do a white bean puree dip that I can dip the bread in, uh, that I can use as a pasta sauce on the noodles, or I'll just take a can of you know, cannellini beans or butter beans and, and throw that in with the rice. So very, very important to keep the fiber intake, to keep the detox going, and keep the gut motility high because you don't want the food sitting there. Maybe the candida overgrows. Maybe you don't feel so good. But in regards to the meal timing, specifically with those grain sources that don't have that much fiber. So if you're having steel cut oats for breakfast, you, know, you don't really have to throw something in there, but you know, like my barley stew for lunch, I'll have some whole barley, which isn't super high in fiber, but I will throw in some mushrooms, some white onions, maybe I'll have a few chunks of sourdough bread. And I do notice if the fiber content in the meal isn't that high, I don't feel as good because the gut motility definitely slows down. So then we have light fruits. Uh, I eat mostly apples, guys, just peeled honey crisp apples. Uh, maybe pears I'll have once in a blue moon. They're not usually as ripe and consistent. And pineapple I do enjoy maybe once a month uh, since I don't have a girlfriend, not as frequently as I need to, but Apple's definitely the better choice. I like it for dessert. You want to peel them, obviously go organic as with all the other things. And you know, you're just giving your body some sugar because it kind of digests that separately from the other starches and the other carbohydrates. So it's nice to have that in every meal just to feed the gut bacteria a little more, keep things moving and not lose your mind on this strict diet. 
So there's no real downsides to any of those foods in the context of this diet. You can pretty much eat as much as you want. I know I gave amounts for the grains and the protein, but you know the beans and, and the vegetables and stuff are kind of like whatever you want, whatever is kind of makes sense for the meal. And I'll just have one apple. You're never gonna really want to eat more than one fruit on this diet. Uh, sometimes I'll even just have half of the fruit and save the other half for the next meal. Okay, moving on to plant fats. So I cook everything in a little bit of coconut oil, which is a saturated fat that's minimally inflammatory, antifungal. The uh, MCTs in the coconut oil have antimicrobial properties. So that's the main reason I'm using that. If you wanna have nut butters and put some like macadamia nut butter or stuff like that in your oatmeal in the morning, if you wanna have a little bit of chocolate here and there, uh, maybe you're getting like the white chocolate cookie bar, some Frankie's free range foods. Uh, you know, we have the new quinoa crisp bar, which has a combination of several of these actually. It's really if, you know, you're trying to gain weight, you want to add more calories, or you're craving fat. Those are the scenarios where you would want to add more plant fats to your diet. The saturated fats, the meat, all that stuff can kind of stimulate the liver to release more bile as well as increased reabsorption of nutrients. So. That's why we focus more on the plant fats with this diet. Yeah, so right now I'm basically putting a small amount of coconut oil in each of my meals, whether it's like one or two teaspoons in the oatmeal or in the barley stew or in the udon noodle pasta. Uh, sometimes for breakfast I will do some nut butter in the oatmeal, but I still wanna keep the fat content pretty low because just the small amount of fat that naturally occurs in all of these foods, like even oats have some fat, that is typically enough to stimulate the liver detox, and you definitely don't want to exceed that. Uh, we'll talk about that in the cheat meal uh, in a little bit. Then we have omega-3 foods. You know, maybe once every week or two when I have some fresh bread hot out of the oven, I do like having some caviar with it. Uh, egg yolks are good too. I like go to a restaurant and have some steak tartare for an egg yolk, uh, just to make sure I'm getting the highly available omega-3. It's not really necessary more than once or twice a month it's not something you want to really focus on. And as I mentioned briefly earlier, for people that are in like really, really poor health circumstances, you might not want to do that at all because caviar can be pretty high in histamine, has a pretty high salt content. Egg yolks can cause some allergic reactions and be inflammatory to some people. So you might want to shy away from that, especially for the first month or two of this diet, as well as uh, the plant fats. Under no circumstance are those required on this diet or needed in any meal whatsoever. You don't need them. And especially if you're eating like lean white fish, you don't need to go for the omega-3 and you don't really need to increase the plant fat intake outside of the minimal amount of coconut oil you would use for cooking. Uh, so hopefully this gives you guys a pretty good idea of everything I've been eating and what I do. I guess I will mention just be careful with you know certain things that I warned about like chocolate with the caffeine. Sometimes you might not sleep that well. Uh, one thing we didn't mention here is the glandulars, like the, the testicles, the goat testicles, sheep testicles that I eat once or twice a week for testosterone. That's definitely something important to include. Uh, I guess you would lump it up here, like having ovaries for a woman for the estrogen. That's important because when your liver's not functioning, when you're not healthy, your body's not producing the ideal amount of hormones. So uh, you definitely want to keep that in the diet consistently. And then if you do decide you know, to go out to a restaurant, to have a cheat meal, all that type of stuff, like one time I put like way too much butter on the bread. I had some slightly fattier meals. I had like a steak sandwich with French fries for dinner. So every part of the meal that I was having had a pretty significant fat content. And I was pretty much on the toilet all day for the, the better part of the next day because that increase in fat stimulated so much bile release it was just too acidic and too caustic for my digestive system. So if you do go out to eat, if you do deviate on this diet, if you do have cheat meals, the most dangerous thing is a high fat meal, is a high fat meal. And then if you're eating a large volume of high fat foods, like you're having a burger or two and some French fries, you know, you need some extra bread in there to soak it up. And just like the bun on the burger that's fried in butter, you know, you need some like high starch content and lower fat foods and that type of stuff. And then if you start having like super high fat desserts like cake and ice cream, it's better to err on the side of caution 
if you know, you're going out, you're ordering appetizers, you're having a full meal, entree and dessert, make sure at least half of the meal is you know, on the leaner side. It's not like super, super rich or super high in fat. Yeah, I don't wanna to elaborate too much on that as you know, this video is way longer than I would have liked it to be already. Uh, but there's a lot of significant factors in this diet that I have not spoken about. Like I offhandedly mentioned the glandular therapy without going too much into it. We have some videos on that. There's things like masticum and probiotic water kefir that I have every single day. So, you know, the probiotics, the supplements, the glandular stuff, the water, there's a lot of things outside of the base foods of this diet that you should be doing that you might need to be doing to maintain your energy levels and feel good. But uh, just the base of this, especially the blue foods, is uh, an excellent starting point and arguably enough to kind of fix and recover your health. So, as always, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you want to go to frank you will see all of my interesting businesses where you will find health products related to this. Uh, you know, we have some grains on my Amazon shop. Of course, the animal protein and stuff like collagen broth is on Frankie's Free Range Meat. We even have some artichokes now available on Frankie's Free Range Food. So definitely check out all the websites, guys. But as usual, please drop a like on the video. Leave a comment down below. Make sure to subscribe and check that notification bell. And I'll see you guys soon.